Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. We're taking a look today at the Tableau TV Tuner today. This is their fourth generation product. It's relatively affordable. And what you do is you hook this thing up to an antenna and then connect it to your computer network. And then you can watch TV on supported devices like this little on Android TV puck here. And you get DVR capabilities along with the live TV from the antenna. And additionally, this supports advertiser supported streaming channels as well. And it doesn't have any ongoing cost of ownership beyond the purchase price. There's no subscription here. It just works out of the box and will continue so long, I guess, as Tableau stays in business. And we're going to get into this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this product is all about. Now, the price point on this is $99 for the tuner only. They also have a version that bundles in an antenna but you don't hook this up to your television directly. All you do is hook it up to an antenna and then it will deliver the content over your network. So you can put it in the house in a spot that works the best and then all of your other devices presumably will be able to connect to it and watch live TV. I've got mine hooked up upstairs right now next to where my antenna is located. And as you can see here, it's a pretty attractive white plastic device. There's not much for ports on it, just an Ethernet port there for connecting it to your network, along with a USB port for connecting external storage. I'll talk more about that in a minute, along with the coax connector for your antenna, and then, of course, the power connector. It also has Wi-Fi on board, so if you don't have Ethernet in the room where you've got it set up, it will work with your Wi-Fi network. It supports AC networks, but note that Wi-Fi with the version of over-the-air TV that this supports tends to be a little bit flaky. So if you can hook it up with the Ethernet, you're going to have a much better experience. And if you are going Wi-Fi, you're going to want to make sure that the Wi-Fi signal in the room that you're locating this in is adequate to support it so that you can have consistent performance. Now, it's also wall-mountable. They give you hardware in the box to do that. You can also just leave it flat on a table because it has a nice big rubber foot at the bottom. And altogether, I think it's a pretty attractive looking product. They don't recommend, though, installing this in an attic, which would normally be the best place to do it because that's where your antenna is likely going to get the best signal. And that's because it can't deal well with extreme temperatures. They're maxing this one out at 95 degrees Fahrenheit for the room that it's in. So anything warmer than that is going to be a problem. That's 35 degrees Celsius. So just keep that in mind. You'll probably want to find a room that has good Wi-Fi and good antenna coverage so you can get the best results out of the tuner here. As far as tuning goes, this only supports ATSC 1.0 broadcasts. And I thought that was rather interesting because Tableau got bought by a major broadcast conglomerate called Scripps and they chose not to support the new and better ATSC3 format. And that's primarily because the industry is encrypting most of the broadcasts that they're doing. And Scripps is one of the companies doing that. And they couldn't get their own device certified for that purpose. So this is going to only work with the current standard. And the support for that standard is slated to end around 2027 when they fully transition over to the new one. So you will get a couple of years out of this, but it is not compatible with ATSC 3. Now this has two tuners on board, which means that it can tune into two different channels simultaneously. So you could watch something live and record something at the same time. It also has built-in storage, only about 128 gigabytes or so. And they say that'll give you about 50 hours of storage on the unit itself. And you'll note earlier that I have an external hard drive currently connected to mine and that will allow you to expand out its storage and store more stuff. It'll support up to an eight terabyte hard drive. And when you record with a hard drive, it just leaves it as the raw MPEG-2 that comes off the air. On the internal storage, if you're not using an external hard drive, it will transcode the video to MPEG-4. And because it needs to process the video to make that conversion, the box will limit itself to only eight hours of recordings a day unless you plug in the external hard drive where it won't do any of that video processing at all. 
Now I found the setup process to be pretty easy. You do have to set up an account on Tableau's website. This is why it requires the internet and then it guides you through the step-by-step -step process of getting it started. They predicted about 15 minutes of setup time. Mine came in a little less than that and it was able to detect most of the channels that I can normally pick up here, at least on the ATSC 1.0 standard. But one note here is that they do want to track your activities outside the application. And I suspect that's because they are putting ads on some of the streaming channels that they have on this device. And they're going to use that data to target you. On the iPhone, at least, you can opt out of that, but it may not be so easy on other platforms. Now, once the setup process is complete, you can start watching live TV and setting up recordings. One big restriction, though, is that you cannot watch anything on your mobile devices when you're outside of your home. You could probably get something to work with a personal VPN, but if you are not on your home Wi-Fi, your phone will not be able to watch anything, and that includes recordings. It's a pretty big restriction and one that you don't get on streaming services. But of course, the broadcasters make a lot more money off of you if you are subscribed to one of those streaming services where they collect a subscriber fee. And that's why they're going to be pushing you in this direction. And that's why this particular device owned by a broadcaster is going to be a lot more restrictive than some of the services out there. Now, if you are in your home, you can watch TV from your antenna on your tablet or phone. And on the home screen here, it's going to make some recommendations for you. It really wants me to watch this drag race right now on Fox. I actually would like to watch that at the moment. And then if I scroll down the list here, you can also see a full channel guide. And what I'm gonna do here is just select something that might be a little friendlier for copyright purposes. And when I select a show, I have the option to watch live or record the episode. I'm just going to go ahead here and click watch live and you can see that it's spun up here very, very quickly. I have found that going from one channel to the next is a little bit slower. So if we jump out of there real quick and then maybe go over to channel 30.2 here, one of those sub channels and click on watch live, you can see it does take a little bit longer for it to go ahead and tune into that particular channel. So it's not gonna be very quick for jumping around from one channel to the next, but uh, if you have a good signal to your antenna, it seems to work okay. Let's take a look at some of the setup options and then we'll look at how it works on a TV. Now, if you click on the gear icon here, it'll bring you to your settings screen. And the first thing you'll see is how much storage you have left, whether you're using an external hard drive or the internal storage. When you connect an external drive, it stops using the internal storage completely. Any recordings that you had on there before you added the drive are accessible, but anything in the future gets written to the external drive because that is more efficient for the device here. You also have the option under general to turn off the LED light that is glowing on the unit all the time. And there's also an option here for the antenna amplifier. I've had mine set to off because my antenna, big televis I have up on the roof, already has a uh, amplifier built in and you can often have some tuning issues if you have the internal amplifier on along with the one from your antenna. And you might want to experiment with this if you're having a hard time reaching a TV station that is farther out. One thing I have noticed is that the Tableau, at least at the moment, really has a hard time getting my CBS affiliate, which is way far away from my home. Some of the other devices I use, like the uh, Zapper Box and the HD Home Run, can tune it in a little bit better than this one can. So I'm not sure how great the tuner is on this device, but most of the other channels that I'm able to pick up are coming in okay on here. Now also in the settings screen, you will find an option for your channel lineup, and this will give you all of the stations that were able to get picked up in the device's channel scan. You're also going to see that these stations have a little check mark next to them because you can uncheck channels and have them not appear on your devices if it's something that you're just not interested in seeing. So you do have a little bit of control over what you get on your channel guide and available to your home. One other thing to note is that it doesn't have much of a signal strength meter, at least one that I could find, but it does give you some basic signal info based on the time that it last did its channel scan, but it's not all that accurate. So for example, I haven't been able to tune into WFSB here reliably at all, yet when it did its initial channel scan, it had three dots next to it. So some things are going to be a bit of trial and error, and unfortunately, you're going to have to do a lot of that 
because there's no real-time signal strength meter that I can find to help you direct your antenna properly. If you have any experience with TV antennas from the past, it hasn't changed much. You still have to point it until you get into the right spot. And this doesn't really help you all that much to find that sweet spot, unfortunately. So what you have to do is keep rescanning to see what it can pick up after each small adjustment of the antenna. So let's take a look and see what the TV interface looks like on this. At the moment, there are apps for the Android TV, for Fire TV, and Roku. The app feels pretty similar across the different platforms. There is an app plan for Apple TV, which wasn't available at the time I recorded this video, along with apps for Samsung and LG televisions. So when you first boot the app up, the nice thing is, is that if you have your Tableau all set up, it just finds it on the network. You don't have to log into it. It just brings you right here to this screen. One of the limitations of this right now is that it doesn't support multiple users. So everybody who sits down at your TV gets the same experience, unfortunately. So your kids are not going to have their own uh, unique experience here. So you'll need to kind of govern things a little bit more than you might on other platforms. And as you scroll through here, you can see some recommendations for things that are on right now that Tableau thinks I might want to watch. I can also see my recordings, which I'll show you in a minute. You also get sports information, some premieres that are coming up, new episodes of different shows, and then things that are trending across the Tableau ecosystem. And what's nice about this is that it's all tailored based on what channels the antenna picked up. So for example, if I click on Seinfeld here, it will show me when Seinfeld is airing on uh, channels that I have access to, which is pretty cool. So lots of neat little things that you can do to kind of browse around. Uh, but then of course you can go over here to the channel guide and scroll through a more traditional kind of interface. And what you can do if you wanted to set up a recording for something, maybe I wanna watch uh, this episode of The Swamp People at seven o'clock. I can click on the episode here and either record the episode add it to my favorites or schedule a series recording. I'll give you a closer look at this. On the series recording side, you can record all the episodes or just record the new ones. It won't do duplicates. So if the same episode comes on multiple times, it only records one version of it, but new will only give you episodes that are new that you haven't seen before. And then of course I can just record this episode as a one-off. Now, as I've been exploring the interface, one of the big things I'm noticing is that it doesn't handle recording conflicts all that well. A conflict is where you've got three things that you want to record, for example, but only two tuners to do it with. And so what happens here on the Tableau is you don't get a notification anywhere, but as you're browsing through your channel guide, you'll see that one of your shows that you want to record has an orange bar underneath it versus a yellow one. And if you go into that, you can see that it has a scheduling conflict and the only way I can resolve it here is to not record this show or go to one of the other shows that's recording and not record that one. So you don't get like a list of the issues that you have to resolve or any kind of task list. You just have to go looking on your channel guide to see it. And I'm sure this is something they can improve in future software updates, but it's just not handling these issues very well. And with only two tuners on the box, it's something that I think people might encounter quite frequently. Now, every time you click on a show on the channel guide here, it is going to pull up a menu for you to make your decision about what you want to do. But if you just want to tune into a channel, you can put the cursor on top of the network here, and this will give you a direct tune to that station. You also have the ability to do some time shifting here. So I can go over here and pause, and this will buffer up the live broadcast, and then I can get up and go to the bathroom or whatever and come back and have it pick up right where I left off. Additionally, if I go over here to info, I can start recording this show and future shows as well. So they've got, I think, a pretty decent interface here. And there is some room for improvement, of course, but this is kind of 1.0 of this generation of the product. Now, if I want to watch my recorded shows, I can find those in the library that you see up here at the top. So we'll just scroll over there. And I've got the news that I recorded at noon. So I'm going to click on that. It's missing its thumbnail and I'm seeing a few shows like that. And as you can see here, I've got a portion of the show that I've already watched. So it does keep your position uh, from where you last stopped the playback. So if I click on this and click watch episode, it will bring me back right to the spot where I was last watching and that will sync up across my devices as well. 
And here we've got the news playing. I can uh, pause it, of course, just like I did on the live broadcast, but I can also fast forward. So it does do like 10 second uh, skips here. So you can skip through commercials this way. It doesn't have a commercial skip function. There does not appear, at least on the TV interface, to have like a 30 second skip button but you can very easily find where a commercial ends and pick up from where you left off there because it's got some really helpful thumbnails on here. So it feels pretty good. It's also pretty quick at seeking to different parts of the broadcast as I go back through. The one issue I have with it though is that I can't go and watch the episode from the beginning. So I have to rewind it if I wanted to start something over from scratch, but it does keep a pretty good idea of where I last left off in the episode. I can also mark the episode watch so it doesn't appear as something that I haven't watched yet, but it'll stay on the hard drive. And then you have the ability to delete individual recordings when you're done with them if you want. One other thing you can do here is protect the episode. As storage fills up, it'll start deleting the older stuff first. So when you click protect, it makes it so it only gets deleted if you specifically push the delete button. Now, as I mentioned, this also has free advertiser supported streaming channels, and you'll find those channels on your channel guide after you get to the last one from your antenna. And these channels are very similar to what you would get on Pluto TV and some of the other free streaming options, but they're integrated into your Tableau interface here. And what's cool about this is that you can record these as well. So for example, if I wanted to record the kids in the hall here on the whatever channel that is, I can click on this and actually set a recording for this streaming show, which is pretty cool. You don't have the tuner restrictions here because this is coming in over the internet, but this will record onto my hard drive and I can go ahead and watch this later. I can also set it up to record all of the episodes if I wanted to. So I could have it uh, basically look for the show whenever it comes on on any of the streaming channels that are on the platform here and record those shows for me. So that's pretty cool. It doesn't have a huge list of these channels just yet, but uh, this is something that I'm sure they could very easily add to over time. And this is also why this device doesn't have a subscription fee because they're hoping to make money off of the ads that you're going to see on these channels. So it kind of offers the best of both worlds in that you get kind of a Pluto TV experience here, but you also get all of your local channels coming in off of your antenna. Now, one other note with this is that it is limited to only six simultaneous viewers. And those viewers, of course, have to be in your home. I suspect that is probably due to the hardware they chose for this device. They were trying to hit a price point and I think this hardware can only really support about six simultaneous users while still having resources available for recording things in the background. It feels pretty nice, but minimal. And I'm not sure how much more they're going to add to the feature set because I don't think they want to bring this to a parity with YouTube TV and other services that charge a monthly fee that the broadcasters collect a sizable portion of. So I think what you see here is largely how this product is going to work into the future. One big thing that's lacking right now is the ability to watch on your PC or Mac. So hopefully that's something they add in the future. But if you're looking for something inexpensive that pulls down the ATSC one broadcast and records them, this will get the job done and you don't have an ongoing cost of ownership. So if you're in an area where you've got good signal, it's probably worth considering. It feels like a pretty nice product here and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do to it in the future. I will though have more to say on this product in ATSC 3 coming up in one of my commentary episodes so we'll save that for later and until next time this is Lon Seidman thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.